Welcome to this second video on the ISEB pretest using resources very kindly provided by Pretest Plus. Once again, I'm going to tell you where to pause the video before each question so that you've got a chance to try everything for yourself before you see my solutions. And if you think that more people should have access to free 11 plus tuition, don't forget to tell your friends about the Easy 11 plus YouTube channel. I'm going to take a moment here to discuss something very important that I didn't cover in the first video. The ISEB pretest is what is known as an adaptive test. That means, basically, that if you answer a question well, it thinks this is a really strong candidate, so I'm going to show them a slightly more difficult question, and that next question might be worth more points. If you get a question wrong, they're going to show you a slightly easier question next, and that question will be worth fewer points. So it's like a tree that branches off, in effect. This means that if you answer the first question, or the second question, or even worse, the first and the second question incorrectly, you're going to get channeled towards easier questions, and it's going to be really, really hard to recover and get as many points as somebody who began by answering the first couple of questions correctly. So, although you shouldn't spend minutes and minutes staring at the screen, it's very important not to rush the first few questions in each section and make sure that you've come up with the best answers to them that you reasonably can. If you're going to rush some questions, it's better to rush the questions that come towards the end of a section. If that's complicated, here's the simple version. When you're doing a computer test, be especially careful not to rush the first questions and to be as sure as you can that you've got the correct answer. So you can see that we're going to get 50 minutes and there are going to be 36 questions. You don't need to space the questions evenly. Some questions are going to be really quick and easy to solve and some are going to take a little bit more time. That's fine. Just keep an eye on the clock so that you don't start to fall significantly behind. As well as your computer, you'll also have a piece of paper to do your own working on. That's just for you, it won't be marked, but it's really, really important to use it. For my bit of paper, I'm going to be using my tablet, which is here. Remember what I said before about taking special care with the first few questions. So, in a spirit of calm concentration, let's get started. I think the most important pieces of information here are that you can't go back, which you already know, and that your rough working is just for you and won't be marked. And of course, you know that as well. Here is our first practice question, and we're already being timed, so we shouldn't spend too long on this. Ben has 334 stamps. The stamps are either red or yellow. He's got 127 red stamps, so the rest must be yellow. So this is very straightforward. We just need to do 334 minus 127. Let's hope that's an option, and indeed it is. So we select 207 and we move on. Okay, we have a second practice question here. Which of these is equal to two-fifths? Okay, so let's have a look through the options before we start doing lots of working out. Two-fifths, well, six-fifteenths, so a fifteenth, to get from five to fifteen, we have to times by three. If we times two by three, we get six. So two-fifths and six-fifteenths are equivalent. Now this is just the sort of working that in a written answer exam you would definitely have to write it out. Um, in an exam like this, if you're confident of the answer, if you're really sure, because you're under quite a strict time limit and because you've got multiple choice options, it can be sensible once you've found the right answer just to select it and move on, as long as you're confident and you're pretty sure you haven't made a silly mistake. Let's have a look at this one. What is the area of shape A? Well, we know the area is the length times the width. So here it is going to be eight times three, which of course is 24 centimeters squared. All the options are centimeters squared. Two X plus eight equals 20. What's the value of X? Okay, so let's solve this as a piece of algebra. Two X plus eight equals 20. So two X not plus eight is going to be 12 minus 8 from 20. We do the same thing to both sides. 2x is 12, so 1x must be 6. Okay, that's a very hard to read 6, but it's just my working. And that's correct, and we go on to the next. That's the end of the practice questions, and so now we carry on with the test itself. And you can see that we've used up just over two and a half minutes, and we've got ourselves into the swing of it 
and so that's time well spent. And now we're onto the test proper. What number is 12 less than 300? We don't even need the working out paper for this. 12 less than 300, so 10 less will be 290. Take off another 2, 288. Now we look at the options and 288 is indeed there. Now this is one of these questions where it's really useful to work it out before you look at the options because that way you find the answer and then you check that it's there and if it is, that means you can be pretty confident that it is indeed the answer. What is the value of the 3 in the number 37,229? There are five digits here. If it was the middle digit, the 2, that would be 200. If it was the last digit, the 9, that would be the units, it would have a value of 9. You see where we're going with this. We're looking at the 3 in 37,000. So its value is 30,000, it's in the 10,000s column. So we find 30,000 down here, that is indeed the answer. You could also do some elimination here, it clearly isn't hundreds. It isn't 3,000, because then we'd have 3,000 and something as our number. It certainly isn't 300,000, and it isn't 30. So elimination also gets us to the correct answer. Six can be made in two different ways, one times six or two times three. Keep referring back to examples like this when you're answering a question, just so you've got a clear sense of what they are and aren't looking for. In how many different ways is it possible to make 20? So let's go to our working out page and do this. Okay, so how many ways can we make 20? So 20 up here. So we can make 20 with 1 times 20, as they did. Okay, 2 times, always be systematic, 2 times 10. 3 times, ah, doesn't divide by 3, 4 times 5, 5 times 4, but hang on, 4 times 5 and 5 times 4 are the same thing, okay? Can we do 6 times something? No, because you can do 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 times 2, we've already done 2 times 10. So there are only these options, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. Is 3 an option? It is, and so we move on. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. What number comes next in the sequence? So you can see that we are doubling each time. Okay, so the next one is going to be 16 times 2, which is 32. Is that an option? Yes, it is. Now, I think that's quicker than trying out all the options and eliminating. I think that with this sort of question, elimination is only more efficient when it would take a long time to work out the answer. Usually it's better to work out the answer and then check that it exists among the options at the bottom, but it does depend on the kind of question. You could also solve this by looking at the intervals, saying that from 1 to 2 is an interval of 1, from 2 to 4 is an interval of 2, from 4 to 8 is an interval of 4, from 8 to 60 is an interval of 8. So you could say the intervals are doubling each time, and then you could use an interval of 16 to solve the next part of the sequence. That isn't any simpler, really. Uh, I would just look at it carefully and hopefully you'll spot that it's doubling at each step. On to the next. The graph, which is rather small for you, shows how much money Clara saved and spent each month of one year. Okay, so we look at the graph and we check that information. You might need to make this um, nice and big. By the way, if things are looking blurry on the screen, go down to the cog at the bottom of your YouTube video and improve the quality, it's called, the resolution. Set that as high as you can and you'll find that you can see all these details that you won't be able to see if you've got a lower quality setting. So here we see how much money Clara saved and spent and we can see that saved is a darker line on the graph and spent to the right of each saved line is a white bar on the graph, let's say. Uh, so we're looking at spending, which is the white bar. So we're looking at March and October. So we can see that in March, she spent 30 pounds. And we can see that in October, she spent 20 pounds. So we need to do 30 minus 20. I'm not going to insult you by going to my working out paper. I think we know what the answer is here. Which number of these ones is the only multiple of 6 and 9? So now I think rather than overcomplicating things, let's just check each option and say, is it in the 6 times table? Is it in the 9 times table? So 72 is clearly in the 6 times table because 60 is, and this is 12 more, which is two sixes. Is it in the 9 times table? Add up the digits. 7 plus 2 is 9. So it is in the 9 times table. In fact, it's 8 times 9. So 72 is a multiple of 6 and 9. We're told in the question that there's only one possibility, so we found 72, we can move on.
which fraction is equivalent to a third. So let's have a look at them. So three eighths, well three ninths would be a third because three times three is nine. So three is a third of nine. So three eighths is not. Eight out of 24. If you times eight by three, you get 24. So eight twenty-fourths is a third. Another way of putting it, eight is a third of 24. So this is our answer. So this is one of these questions where it is easiest to look at each option, at each multiple choice option and select from them rather than trying to work it out in advance. Okay, here we've got a table with some scores that Dev has achieved in his mental math test. Uh, so we can see, looking at the right hand side, we've got a tally. So we can see that, for example, he scored 12 two times. And they say Dev scored 17 on five separate occasions. That's to help you understand what's going on if you don't understand tally charts. Which one of the following statements is true? So let's check them. Dev scored four marks on 18 separate occasions. Well, he never scored four marks according to this table. His lowest score was 12. His highest score was 18, uh -uh, he scored 19. His lowest score was two, no, his lowest score was 12. The difference between Dev's highest and lowest score is seven. His highest score was 19, his lowest score was 12. Difference between 19 and 12, of course, is seven. 19 minus 12 is seven, so that is correct. Dev was absent for two tests, don't know anything about that. Eight times something is 360. What number makes this correct? Okay, eight times something is 360. Well, you can do it by trial and error, but a very simple bit of algebraic thinking will show you that we need to do 360 divided by 8 to get the answer. So let's do that. How many of the squares shown will fit into the rectangle? Okay, we could copy it out, but actually this is quite simple if we look at it. First of all, we need to work out how many times the square will go lengthways. Well, it's eight centimetres across, so a two centimetre square will go four times that way. How many times will it go that way? Four centimetres. So this two centimetre square will go in twice. So it will go four times across, twice up. Four times two is eight times that it will fit in. I'm facing north. Through how many right angles must I turn to face north again? OK, so I'm facing this way. One right angle, I'll be facing this way, another, this way, another, this way, and then I'll be back facing this way. So that's one, two, three, four right angles that I need to turn through. 15 divided by 0 0.5 equals, let's have a look at this. So 15 divided by 0 0.5, always good to write it as a fraction. So 15 divided by 0 0.5, but a whole number is always itself divided by 1. So if we want this to be something divided by 1, we have to double it. So we have to do the same with the top. 15 times 2 is 30. You could also solve this. If you times the top and bottom by 10, you'd get 150 over 5. And then you do the division and you get the answer that again is 30. So that's our solution here. And indeed, 30 is an option, so we select it. A film lasted for one hour and 40 minutes and finished at 5.25. What time did the film start? OK, it's well worth doing some written working here, just to be sure. We need to go back one hour and 40 minutes from 5.25. So we're at 5.25, 17.25. Let's go back an hour. We get to 4.25 or 16.25. We've got 40 minutes still to go back. Let's go back 20. 16.05, go back another 20, that's going to be 15.45, 3.45, 15.45, and so here we are, it's on the left hand end. So when you're dealing with these time movements, just be systematic, break it down into bits, and that way you'll get to the answer comfortably and, I hope, without error. Okay, pictograms. Number of days of snow for three years, how many days of snow in total? Always look at the key. So the key says that one snowflake is six days of snow. And if you look at the snowflake carefully, you can see it's got six points. So each of those points must represent one day of snow. Okay, let's look at the first row. That's going to be, so we've got three lots of six is 18, and then half of a snowflake, another three, so that's 21. So on your bit of paper, you might write a note, you might write 21 here. Um, in the next row, we've got one complete snowflake, six, and then we've got a snowflake with five of its points on. So that's going to be 11. So we've got 21, and then we've got 11, and then in the last row, we've got two complete snowflakes, so that's 12. So you've got 21 plus 11 plus 12. 
let's quickly work that out over here. So 21 plus 11 plus 12. So we got four here and we got four here. So we have 44. Then we go out to the test. Is that an option? It is. And so we select it and move on. Ayesha was 98 centimetres tall. She grew seven centimetres more. Okay, how tall was she in metres? Well, you know that 98 plus 7 is 105. Okay, that's straightforward enough. But what is 105 centimetres in metres? Okay, well, there are 100 centimetres in a metre. So we need to take our 105 and divide it by 100. 105 divided by 100. 105 is 105.0, of course. Divide by 100, divide by 10, moves a decimal place decimal point one place, divide by 100 and we move it another. So we end up with 1.05. Dead simple and that is indeed an option 1.05 meters and so that's what we choose. Three friends share two pizzas, okay? Each pizza is cut into six pieces so that means you've got 12 pieces overall. They share them equally. How many pieces does each friend get? Share 12 equally into three lots and you get four pieces in each lot, okay? Uh, nice and straightforward. We don't need to write the working down for that. Again, if it's easy, if you can do it mentally and be confident, then of course save yourself the time. However, there are no prizes for doing things in your head just because you can. Only do mental maths if it really will save you time. 108, 97, 86, 75, 64. Okay, um, so let's just look at it and see whether it falls out obviously before you start copying all of those down. 108 to 97, so we're taking away 10 would get to 98 plus 1, so 11, okay? And then from 97 to 86, another 11. And then, yes, 11, yes, 11. We need to take away another 11. 64 minus 10 is 54, take away 1 is 53. So that should be our answer, and indeed it is an option. By the way, do not get sidetracked if you start to think, oh, I've selected the first option a lot. Maybe I should select something different next time. Don't think like that, okay? Just think about the answers in front of you. If that means that every answer in the test is option B, that's fine, just keep selecting option B. Don't start trying to game the test. It isn't like that. Work out the correct answers to each question and don't worry about the patterns. If the circle is reflected in the x-axis, what will the new coordinates of the center of the circle be. No, what will be the new coordinates of the center of the circle? A much more elegantly constructed sentence. Well done, pretest plus. Okay, we need to re reflect this circle in the x-axis. Now, the x-axis, of course, is the axis that runs across here. That's the x-axis, just as this is the y-axis conventionally. So reflecting it in the x-axis means taking this thing that's down here and sending it up there. It won't move sideways. It'll just move up. Okay? So now we go back to the test, having had that little thought, and we look carefully at this. Uh, again, make sure that your video is set to high quality, the highest quality that works for your computer and your internet connection, um, and then make this nice and big and full screen on a nice big monitor if you can, and then you'll be able to see this pretty tiny little uh, graph. Look, this is what it can be like in the test. You've got to get used to reading little, little, fiddly little things. So we can see that this point is one, two, three, four below the x-axis, okay, if you count down. So when we reflect it in the x-axis, it's going to be four above. So that means that as a coordinate pair, it's going to be something four, okay? It's going to be, it's worth writing notes, let's move to another blank page, it's going to be something four, okay? Because we have the x, then the y. We have along the corridor and then up the stairs. How far up the stairs? It's four up the stairs. Back to the graph we can see that it is two places to the left of the vertical y-axis, and that isn't going to change because we're just reflecting it up. So it's still going to be two to the left. Two to the left is minus two, so the coordinate pair is going to be minus two, four. And again, now we look at the options and see whether that's there. Minus two, ah, careful, that's minus two, minus four. We want minus two, four. It's two left along the corridor and four up the stairs. On to the next. An empty jar weighs 450 grams. When it is filled with jam, it weighs 1.2 kilograms. How much does the jam weigh? Let's look at the answer options just to see that they're all given in grams. So it will make sense for us to do our working in grams rather than kilograms. So, yeah. 
So the empty jar weighs 450 grams. When it's filled with jam, it weighs 1.2 kilograms. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So that is, wait for it, drum roll, 1,200 kilograms. Okay? So we need to find the difference between, what? No, 1,200 grams. So we need to find the difference between 1,200 grams and 450 grams. How do you find the difference? You know this. So the answer is 750 grams, I hope. And we see from the options that that is indeed a possibility. What is the perimeter of this compound shape? Well, we could go around this working out every length. It will take us a little while. There's a much simpler way to look at it. You can see that across the top, the total length is 12 centimetres. In other words, this bit and this bit add up to 12. So if we look at the bottom edge, by the same logic, this bit and this bit must also add up to 12. Now let's look at the left-hand side. We can see that this bit and this bit add up to 7. So looking at the right-hand side, this bit and this bit must also add up to 7. So the total perimeter, the distance around the outside following the jagged edges of this shape, must simply be 12 plus 12 plus 7 plus 7. And now we can just quickly work that out. What is 1.459 rounded to the nearest tenth? So rounding to the nearest tenth means that we are going to have one point something. 1.6, for example. But it can't be 1.6. It must be either 1.4 if we don't round up or 1.5 if we do round up. And whether we round up depends on whether the next digit is 5 or above or not. So we have 1.45, 5 is 5 or above, so we round up the 1.4, that becomes 1.5, that is our answer. If that's a mystery to you, then have a look on my channel for some content about rounding. And if it isn't there yet, it will be soon. 45 minus C equals 37. Look, this is a piece of algebra. We could copy out the equation. But before we do that, let's just use our brains. 45 take away something is 37. What do you take away from 45 to get 37? Of course, you take away 8, don't you? Add 8 to 37, you get 45. We can see the answer to this even if we can barely solve an equation. The answer is clear. Mia practices her violin for 20 minutes every day. For how long does she practice each week? There are seven days in a week. Seven times 20, or seven times two is 14, so seven times 20 must be 140. Okay, is there an option down here that says 140 minutes? No, there isn't, because they're all given in hours and minutes, or just hours. So we need to work out how many hours are 140 minutes. I think rather than using the bit of the paper, let's just keep, I'll flatter your intelligence, let's just keep doing it in our heads, okay? So 140 minutes, one hour is 60, two hours are 120. To get from 120 to 140, that's another 20 minutes, so it's 2 hours, 20 minutes. And lo and behold, that's where, actually by coincidence, my pointer was resting. 2 hours and 20 minutes. Mrs Chop goes shopping. How poetic. She spends half her money in the supermarket, then she spends £5 in the coffee bar. Um, must be a nice coffee. Finally, she returns home in a taxi that costs her £10. And then she's got £5 left. How much did she start with? Okay, this is clearly a working backwards question. We could write it all out. We don't need to. We could do this. Five pounds left, okay. Before the taxi, another 10, 15 pounds. Before the coffee, add another five, 20 pounds. That's half her money, because she spent half of it and that's what's left. So two times 20 is 40. So she started with 40, okay. Let's check it. Really easy to make a mistake here. So. Start with 40, spend half of it, you've got 20 left. Spend five, you've got 15 left. Spend 10 on a taxi, you've got five left. And that matches the question, she has five left. So we're right. I don't know why I'm whispering. So let's stop whispering, phew, that's better. 28 children in a class, three quarters are girls and the rest, that's a quarter, it must be, 
are boys. How many boys are there? We want to know a quarter of 28. Okay, so if you break through all the words, this is a really easy question. A quarter of 28. Do we really need to write out the working people? No, we don't because you know your times tables. If you don't know your times tables, learn them. They are the most important thing. They are the biggest difference between doing badly and doing well in a maths test and to put it bluntly between failing or passing your 11 plus. They save you so much time in an exam. I use up all the time again, waffling. So we need to find a quarter of 28, it's that simple. If you know your times tables, you know that four times seven is 28, so you know that it's seven. That's it, it's just a really simple times tables question dressed up with words. That's what I do in these videos. I just take really simple things and confuse them with words. I don't confuse you though, you're too smart. A box holds 250 carrier bags. How many boxes are required for 9,250 carrier bags? Okay, whoa, this is clearly a division, right? Obviously a division, you can tell that. We need to 9,250 divided by, divided into 250 units, okay? The divided between, two, whatever, it's 9,250 divided by 250. What am I doing here? When you've got a problem like this, it is always best to write it as a fraction and simplify before you start doing really enormous long divisions. So here's our fraction, and the first simplification we can do is cancelling the noughts. Now we've got 925 divided by 25. Well, I can see a fairly quick way to do this, actually. So 25 goes into 100 four times, right? So in 900, it's going to go nine times four times. And again, times tables, nine times four is 36. But this is 925, so it's one more, it's gonna be 37. If you don't like that, um, and if you just want to be more certain, maybe by being more systematic, we could say, well, 25 is five times five. So we just need to divide by five, then divide by five. So 925 divided by five. Okay, five goes into nine once, remain four. So there we are, 37, that's our answer again. What is the size of angle A? It's one of these questions, if you know how to do these problems, it's really easy. If you don't know how to do these problems, then you start staring at the screen and screaming. Staring at the screen and screaming inside because it's an exam and you can't just scream in an exam hall. But you're not going to scream because you know how to do this. 320 degrees at the top, but you know that a complete circle is 365 Ah, no it isn't, you see. Very common 11 plus mistake is to confuse the number of degrees in a circle and the number of days in a year. There are 365 days in most years. There are 360 degrees in a circle. So what's left here? 40 degrees to get from 320 to 360. So we know that at the top of the triangle we have 40 degrees. Rough sketch, okay, so we know that's 40. And we know that these two here are the same as each other. Okay, it's an isosceles triangle. The um, test shows us that. It shows us that by showing us actually that these two sides are the same, which means that these two angles down here must be the same as each other. Let's get rid of a bit of scribbling here to make it a little bit clearer. So these two things down here are the same. Now, in a triangle, how many degrees are there? Really, I could show you how to work it out. I won't because we're under a time limit. You just need to know it. There are 180 degrees in a time triangle. We have used up 40 of them already. 180 minus 40, you know that. Of course, it's 140. These two down here are the same as each other. So we need half of 140 again. This working out is just for me or for you as you do your exam. It doesn't need to be clearly set out for a marker. 140 divided by two or 14 divided by two is seven. So this is, oops, I'm not on my working page. There we are, that's everything I've been doing there. Have I just been talking at you while not showing you my working? Yes, I have, I'm totally sorry. Anyway, the answer is that it is 70 or seven egg, that's 70. Okay, back to the test. So 70 degrees, that's an answer here. A packet of crisps costs X pence and a carton of drink costs Y pence. Okay, that would be confusing in the shop. Ali buys eight packets of crisps and eight cartons of drink. Which expression shows how much change he will receive in pence from a £10 note? Okay, wow. This might be a bit scary. If it's really scary, go through the options at the bottom and you'll probably get there in the end. But let's try working this out because actually it's not nearly as hard as it looks. So we know that... Ali um, starts with a £10 note. In fact, checking the question, he starts with a £10 note. We're asking about change. In other words, what is left 
when you take some amounts of money away from 10 pounds. Okay, so you start with 10 pounds, but we need the answer in pence. So how many pence are there in 10 pounds? Okay, 10 pounds is 10 pounds. Each pound contains 100 pence. 10 lots of 100 is 1,000. Okay, 10 pounds equals 1,000 pence. That's just a note for me. So we start with 1,000 pence, and then we spend some, we get rid of some of it. How do we get rid of things from an amount? We take them away, minus sign, okay? When you're doing algebra, it's just the expression of English with symbols. We started with a thousand pence, we took away, what did we take away? Well, eight packets of crisps and eight cartons of drink, okay? So eight packets of crisps and eight cartons of drink. But hang on, eight pence and eight pence? Nah, a packet of crisps costs X pence. So we spend eight lots of X pence, and there are also eight cartons of drink, and each one costs Y pence. So we spend eight lots of Y pence, okay? Is it a thousand pence minus eight X, and then add on eight? No, it's a thousand pence minus everything that he spent. Eight X plus eight Y. Does this option exist? in the answers, 1,000 minus 8x plus 8y. So we've only got two 1,000 minuses, and they both 1,000 minus eight times something, okay? That one and that one. So this is the moment that's a little bit tricky. It might be pushing what some of you have studied in algebra. Here we are going to have to do something called factorizing. So 8x plus 8y is the same as eight lots of x plus why? Okay, I'm not going to explain that from first principles, but I think I should make a video about factorizing. So that's something I'll do actually. Uh, by the time you watch this, it may already be on the channel. 1000 minus 8 times x plus y. And indeed, you can see that it's over here. On to the next. Ah, Bodmas Bidmas. I've got a very popular video on this. If this isn't completely clear to you, go and watch it. Um, so, Bodmas, we've got uh, brackets, orders, Division and multiplication, in the order they appear, there's a multiplication here, so 2 times 5 is 10, so we've got 9 plus 10 minus 3, okay? And now we've just got plusing and minusing, we do these in the order they appear, so 9 plus 10 is 19, minus 3 is 16. 16 is the answer, and indeed it is down here. Okay, here we've got a pattern with matchsticks. We've got 15 and a half minutes left, and we've got seven grey boxes at the bottom still. So we're doing absolutely fine. We're going to have at least a couple of minutes per question. So there's no rush. We can be nice and calm and really try and maximise our marks in the last few questions here. So we need to get to pattern five. We've got patterns one, two, and three here. Now, I'm going to make this easier for myself straight away because I can see that... Each of these patterns is made from triangles of matchsticks. So rather than saying I've got three matchsticks and nine matchsticks and whatever, I'm going to say I've got one triangle, then three triangles, then six triangles. I'm going to work like that because I know that I can get from the number of triangles to the number of matchsticks if I then times it by three. Does that make sense? Lots of little triangles, each one's three matchsticks. I'm just going to think about the triangles until the end. So pattern one, one triangle. Pattern two, Two, three triangles, okay, one and then two more. Let's let's take some notes on a bit of paper to make this nice and clear. And because I'm just doing trick working in triangles, I can just make it simple. Pattern one looks like this, okay? You see, it's just got one little triangle, that dot is my triangle. Pattern two, like this, pattern three, and then I add three there. Pattern four. So that's my pattern five there. So how many dots do I have? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I got 15 triangles, okay, in my pattern. Pattern 5 is going to have 15 triangles in. Each triangle contains three matchsticks. What's 15 times 3? 15, 30, 45. 45 is, again, the left-hand option here. We've taken that option often. Just ignore that. It's just chance. On to the next. The shape is made from cubes of volume one centimetre cubed, okay? So the crucial thing to take away from this is that each edge is one centimetre because they're cubes with a volume of one centimetre. One times one times one gives one. What area would have to be covered if all the exposed faces, the top, the sides and the bottom, the base, 
were painted blue. Okay, so in other words, what is the external surface area, what is the surface area of this shape? Okay, so along the top, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squares painted. Okay, so on my bit of paper, I'm going to take a note. Okay, so looking from above, 10. And we can see if we look at this shape that it's going to be the same from below. So from below is also going to be 10. If I look from the right hand edge directly, I'm going to see one, two squares. So if I paint those blue, that's going to be two. And it's going to be the same from the left hand end. So two from each end. Okay, so I've done above, from below, from the right, from the left, I've got to do from the front and from the back. So if I look from the front, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six faces, okay? So that's six from the front, and if I look from the back, I can also see six faces. So now I've covered all the faces of this figure. Six from the back, six from the front, go back to my note-taking bit of paper. So we're gonna have six this way and six this way, so I'm showing the back and the front, and now I just need to add them together. 10 plus 10 is 20, 6 plus 6 is 12, add them together 32, 2 plus 2 is 4, add that on 36. You could do a column addition just to be absolutely sure, blah, blah, blah. 36 centimetres squared. Do check the units because a tricky question might give you one that has the correct number but the wrong units. And that would not be the right answer. We need centimetres squared because we're talking about area in the question. All the answers here are in centimetres squared, so they're being nice. On to the next. What is the difference between the range and median of the numbers? Now, it is quite difficult to reliably find the median unless you've got the numbers written in order. Okay, remember the median is the middle value when you have the numbers written from smallest to largest. It's a kind of average. So we had better do that. So let's write these out. And just to check, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers here. And in the original question, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers, okay? So I can be pretty confident about this list here. So to find the median, I need to cross out a number from each end, one, 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 until there's one left in the middle. If there are two left in the middle, I then need to find the mean of those two numbers by adding them together and dividing by two. That's covered in my video on median and mean. But here there is a simple one in the middle, so 11 is the median, okay? But we need to find the difference between the range and the median. What's the range? It's the largest minus the smallest, okay? 22, just write it out as I've said it. The largest minus the smallest is minus 19, okay? What do we get if we minus a minus? You need to know this, okay? This is really important. So it's 22 plus 19. You need to know that minus a minus is a plus. I could, I could explain this in first principles. We're doing a time test. We do not have time for first principles. You need to know basic stuff. 22 plus 19, well, that's easy in your head. 22 plus 20 would be 42, so plus 19 is 41. <gasps> So our range is 41, but we need to find the difference between the range and the median. So the range is 41, the median is 11. 41 minus 11, we know this, of course it's 30. So let's go straight to the answer, select it and move on. Okay, what fraction is exactly halfway between the third and a half? We just spoke about this. Right, really important bit of knowledge if you don't have it. How do you find the number exactly halfway, exactly halfway between two numbers? Really simple. You add them together and divide by two. In other words, you find the mean of those two numbers. So first of all, we need to add together a third and a half. A third plus a half. Better show you my working out, hadn't I? A third plus a half. So we want them to be over the same thing, a third plus a half. Well, we can see that three and two both go into six. So a third is two sixths and a half is three sixths. So this is going to give us five sixths. Now I'm assuming that you're good at adding together fractions there. If you aren't, that's something you need to go away and practice. If you're doing any kind of practice 11 plus test and you find that you're not confident on a core skill like adding fractions, then don't be annoyed about it. Just go and solve the problem. Go and work on adding fractions until you know how to do it. So we've got five sixths. So we've added these together. Now we need to half that. So five sixths divided by two. Again, you need to know about dividing fractions. Dividing by two is the same as timesing by a half. If you don't know why, look at my videos on 
times the dividing fractions. Okay, so 5 times 1 is 5, 6 times 2 is 12, so 5 twelfths. And is that an option? Here it is. It isn't even the first one. There we are, on to the next. The difference between the largest possible number and the smallest possible number that can be made by rearranging the digits 62391. Okay, so to get the largest possible number, we need to write these digits from largest to smallest, right? To find the smallest number, we need to do the opposite. So the largest one's going to begin with 9, the smallest one's going to begin with 1. So the largest possibility is going to be 9, 6, 3, 2, 1, whereas the smallest is going to be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9. We need to minus them. Okay, so carry 11 minus 9 is 2. Carry, 11 minus 6 is 5. Carry, a lot of carrying here. 12 minus 3 is 9. 5 minus 2 is 3. 9 minus 1 is 8. 8, 3, 9, 5, 2. Let's see whether it's an option. It is. It's the first one again. Goodness me. 72 counters in a bag. All the counters are blue, red, or yellow. Four more blue counters and red counters, ten more red counters and yellow counters. If a counter is pulled out the bag at random, what is the probability that it will be yellow? <gasps> right, now, this question... You might be thinking algebra, and algebra is a good way to solve this. I'm going to show you how you can solve it just as quickly if you're not confident with algebra, because I think that's very useful to know, and often actually the non-algebraic methods can actually be quicker um, and easier. So um, I'm going to move to, yeah, pause this and have a go, and then we're going to be just looking at my answer space, although I may flick to and fro a little bit. So let's just start by guessing some possibilities. So we know that there are fewer yellow counters than red counters and there are more blue counters than red counters. We know that there are four more blue counters and red counters and there are ten more red counters than yellow counters. So let's just guess. Let's say there are ten yellow counters. Okay, I just made that up completely. Okay, there are ten more red counters and we know there are four more blue counters. Okay, let's add these up. So 10 plus 20 is 30, plus 24 is 54. Okay, we need 72. How do you get from 54 to 72? We add, well if you add 20 you'll get 74, so we've added 18. So we can add 6 to each of these columns and that'll do it. 16, 26 and 30. Just check it. So that's 10 more and that's 4 more. So it meets the rules. So there we are, 16, 26, 30. If it isn't clear how I did that, just rewind, you'll get it. It's really simple. And I think, to be honest, it's probably simpler than doing a lot of equations, even if they are quite easy ones. So what was the question again? The question was, if a counter's pulled out the bag at random, what's the probability that it will be yellow? So we can see that yellow, that's 16 options. Whoa, 16 options out of 72 in total. 16 out of 72. Okay, we're definitely going to need to simplify this. You can see that 16 out of 72 isn't an option there in the answers. So simplifying, let's just make it simple. That's half. 8 over 36, that's half again. 4 over 18, half again. 2 ninths. So we can't go any further than that. Is 2 ninths an option? It is. It's the third one. And on we go. We're almost there. The end points of five lines are given in the answer options. Which line is perpendicular to the line in the diagram? Okay, perpendicular means at a right angle too. So, for example, this would be perpendicular if that's a right angle. So we're going to have to very quickly do some rough sketching to get this. We've got just over three minutes left, so let's power on through. Again, you've already had to go at this. You've paused the video, had to go. Now let's focus on my answer space. So let's sketch this very, very roughly, okay? So I'm just going to put a 5 here, a 5 there. This is a rubbish sketch. It's what you do when you're really short of time. We need to try each option. So 0, 0 will be here. So 0, 0 and 6, 0 would be there. So this line would not be perpendicular. We're looking for something like that, okay? Next option, 1, 6 and 7, 7. 1, 6 would be here. 7, 7 would be here. So we're talking about a line like that. Probably not, but maybe because this is a very rough sketch. It's a possibility. 0, 3. So 0, 3, about here, and 0, 7 there. No line straight up is not perpendicular, okay? So our second one is the only one that's very likely so far. 0, 0, and 7 minus 1. Okay, so that's going to be like that. No, that's clearly not perpendicular. It's not a steep enough line. 0, 0, and 4 minus 6. 0, 0, and 4 minus 6. Okay, so that's like that. 
oh, that really looks like it might be perpendicular because we join those up. So I think that's the most likely option. And so I'm going to pick the last one there. Okay, which is not naught four minus six. And now I'm going to click finish. And it's a great relief to see that my score is 36 out of 36. Well done to me and well done to you. To move on to the next part of this test, just click here. Thank you very much to Pretest Plus for making these excellent resources available for this video. If you found this lesson useful, then please take a moment to tell your friends about Easy 11 Plus, and I hope to see you and them for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson next Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Bye bye.